uh, please just give a warm welcome to Virtual Labs. Thank you very much. So uh, today I'm going to talk again about uh, Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol and uh, about also a new vulnerability I found in this protocol. So. Um, who am I? I'm uh, the head of uh, research and development at Econocom Digital Security, not the digital security in Russia, obviously. Um, I've been studying uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, about four years now, uh, three years now, and uh, I'm the developer and maintainer of Bitter Juice. Uh, maybe you, uh, you have heard about it. This is uh, one of the framework I, uh, I worked on. And uh, I'm having uh, a lot of fun with uh, Nordic semiconductors system and chips. So, let's start with the, the agenda. So, uh, we are going to go through the BAD sniffing 101 for those uh, of you who don't know how to perform BAD sniffing. Then, uh, we are, I'm going to present Beetlejack, which is my new tool for BAD sniffing and much more. Uh, we are going to see uh, what, uh, what is inside this tool, why, why this tool. And uh, in the next last part of the talk, I'm going to disclose a new attack on BAD. All right, so let's start with some uh, Billy sniffing. Just wait a minute. Oop. So Billy sniffing 101. So um, basically, if you uh, nowadays want to sniff uh, Billy connections and Billy communications between two devices, you need some tools. Uh, and there are, uh, you're lucky there are a lot of uh, cheap tools out there. So you may want to sniff with uh, Ubertus one. Uh, sniff BD connections, or you may want to, to use the Adafruit's Bluefoot LED sniffer, which is also a, a nifty tool, or you may want to do it the SDR way with the uh, GNU Radio software suite. So let's start with the, the first one, the Ubertus one. So um, this is a tool that allows uh, anyone to sniff existing and new BD connection. I mean. If you uh, use this tool, you can find existing connections between between devices and also listen for new connections that happen on the uh, on the target device. Um, it did not support channel map, channel map updates, so um, it did not because obviously they updated the firmware yesterday through the uh, DEFCON release. Um, <coughs> Yeah, uh, so they, they updated the firmware and it's not, su not supported by the uh, Ubuntu tool. So this is cool. If you uh, have one, uh, just uh, use this new firmware and try it uh, with the, uh, try it by, you know, sniffing some BD stuff. But the fact is that the, even with the new firmware, the Ubuntu one has some issues sniffing on existing connections. And last but not least, it costs 120 bucks. So it's, um, it's cheap, but not so cheap. The Bluefoot ID sniffer made by Adafruit, so it's based on a, a specific software written by Nordic Semiconductor. So it's a, a proprietary firmware that is used here. Uh, it was uh, last, uh, uh, it was updated in November last year, so it's uh, quite, uh, quite maintained. But this uh, sniffer only uh, allows um, new connection sniffing. You cannot, um, you cannot sniff an existing connection between two devices, already established connection, I mean. So this is uh, very interesting for um, you know security analysis, but if you want to hack into existing devices or already connected devices, you cannot do this with this uh, Bluefoot LED sniffer. It costs around uh, 30 or 14 bucks, so it's uh, it's uh, affordable. And if you want to do this the SDR way, uh, you are going to to have some issues because um, the SDR uh, modules existing with uh, GNU Radio are only able to get the BAD advertisements sent by the devices. So you cannot follow any BAD connection with this, uh, this approach. And this, uh, the reason is very simple because of the latency. There is some kind of latency between the uh, GNU Radio software and the SDR device you are using. And it, uh, it do not allow to jump very quickly over all the channels used in the BAD connection. And last but not least, it requires a 2.4 gigahertz compatible SDR device that costs uh, some uh, hundred of dollars. So uh, it's Again, affordable, but um, it's uh, more expensive than the, the two previous ones uh, I talked about. 
So just to summarize this uh, BAD sniffing 101 part of my talk, so BAD basically is designed to make sniffing difficult. And it, it's working, you know. Uh, it's the, not so easy to sniff BAD connections. Why? Simply because this uh, protocol uses three separate advertising channels spread across the bandwidth. So you cannot listen to these three channels at the same time. You got to be uh, listening on each channel one after the other to, ca to get all the information or maybe to use three devices to you listen to the, these three channels at the same time. The, this protocol also uses uh, some kind of frequency hopping mechanism. So channel, but what we can also call channel hopping. So this uh, channel hopping uh, mechanism makes also sniffing very difficult because once a connection is created between two devices, the, these two devices are going to jump from one channel to another. And then you, you need to, to get the pattern they are using to, to synchronize with this connection and get all the packets. So this is not very easy when you are dealing with existing BAD connections. And both devices can also re renegotiate some parameters at any time. So when you are trying to figure out what these parameters are in order to, to sniff an existing connection, they might change between the, uh, what you are measuring, what you are trying to you know, to recover these parameters. So this will mess your sniffing. So two cases here. You may have a lot of money and you can afford a, a lot of devices and make your sniffing on the, the uh, all 40 channels, for instance. Or if you want to do it uh, the cheaper way, uh, you got to struggle with the BAD sniffing. You're, you won't be able to sniff uh, uh, very easily your connection uh, for the first time. For instance, you can get to wait uh, multiple connections to get your 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 data. So two years ago, I took another approach for the, the for capturing BD packets. Uh, I, I tried some kind of man the middle approach. The idea uh, of this man the middle approach was to have some kind of device in between your phone, for instance, and a, a device uh, it's connected to, and then capture the packets. So it's uh, basically the same, uh, uh, the same approach that we uh, all do when uh, we're going to perform some TCP man the middle, for instance. So, how it works. First, you have to discover a target. You get, you get to, to find a, a target device. So, obviously, this device is advertising itself. So, it's not, um, there is nothing connected uh, to this device. So, it's uh, advertising, announcing uh, its, uh, its presence and so on. So, you can connect to it, get all the information, all the services, characteristics, and so on, in a way that you can uh, then impersonate this device. You connect to this device, that is not advertising anymore because, uh, because of the specifications. Uh, for BLE version 4, uh, once the, a device uh, is, uh, when, um, when, uh, when, yeah, when, once a device is connected to something, it only supports one connection at a time. Most of them, do, most of them do this. Um, there are f a few devices out there that only uh, accepts multiple connections, but it's very difficult for the system on chips that handles all the other radio parts to um, to handle two or three connections at a time because uh, it requires to jump on different channels and with different setup, different parameters. So this is uh, not very easy. Well, you are connected to this device. It's not advertising anymore, so you can create uh, a clone device with the exact same parameters, exact, exact same services, characteristics, even the exact same Bluetooth address, so you can just uh, spoof the device, to, to, in order to say this, and uh, you wait co for connections. Once your phone is connected to your fake device, you're, all you have to do is just to follow, forward the data between your connection with the device and the connection with the phone. So you are in between and you capture everything. So this, this approach has been implemented in Betajuice, uh, one of uh, the tool I was talking uh, about in the introduction. And also in another tool called Gattaker, uh, written by uh, Slavomir, ja Slavomir Jacek. And uh, these two tools implement uh, the uh, man the middle approach. Well, so it was working pretty well until the last few years. Um, and it has a lot of advantages because you can get rid of the uh, three advertising channel problem. 
Uh, I mean, we, if you are using this man-in-the-middle approach, you are controlling the advertising of your device. So you are quite sure to get the connection and not miss it. You can see every BAD operation performed. If there is some kind of uh, characteristic write or read or discovery, you can get all of this and uh, you see everything. And also you can make, you can tamper the data on the fly. Since we are in between the two devices, we can just change data on the fly, making, uh, changing some bytes and, uh, Causing some uh, some troubles uh, in the security point of view, but there are a lot of issues too. One year after having developed the Bitterjuice software, I got a lot of issues on GitHub with uh, people telling, "Ah, I cannot use your tool. It's uh, it's quite complex to install because it requires one virtual machine." And what host computer and some kind of network setup to make these machines communicate with uh, each other. So it was um, a quite complex setup and they, uh, a lot of people had uh, a lot of issues um, putting uh, all of this software uh, on, on their computers and making, making it working. The other problem we have uh, is that we only capture HCI events because we um, work at the uh, adapter level where we don't get any link layer BAD packets. So we are one way upper. Uh, we, are, we, are, we cannot get all the information and especially um, all the pairing packets. Uh, so this approach, the man in middle approach, does not support all types of pairing. And this may co cause a lot of trouble when you are trying to intercept uh, encrypted connections. And obviously, it's also compatible only with 4.0 adapters. Uh, maybe you have heard about the Cambridge Silicon Radio USB adapters that allow some kind of uh, Bluetooth device address spoofing. Well, we got some troubles too with the latest version of the USB adapters or even the um, adapters provided within the, with the motherboard of your computer. So the stock adapter of your computer may cause trouble um, with the, these softwares. So these are the counts of the, the man in the approach. So basically we are doing it wrong. Ubertus BTLE, Okay, it works, but it still has some, lim some limitations, even with the uh, firmware update uh, released yesterday. Nordic Semiconductor Sniffer is closed source and may be discontinued, so we don't know if uh, this software is going to be maintained, and we don't know if, uh, if uh, what, um, what will happen if uh, Nordic Semiconductor decides to not to uh, continue the development of this, uh, of this um, software. So maybe a problem. And uh, the man to middle approach is great, but very, it's too much difficult to use and uh, cause a lot of trouble for users. And also, it cannot get all these uh, link layer packets because we are uh, limited by the uh, solution we opted, up, we opted for. So it's time to improve the BAD arsenal. So basically, what would be the ideal tool to sniff BAD connections? Well, in, we need a tool able to sniff both existing and new connections. We also need a tool that uses cheap hardware in order to make it affordable, you know, to lower the, the, the ticket for BLE sniffing. And all, of course, we need open source software to be able to maintain it, to contribute for allowing other researchers to, to push uh, new features, for instance. So this is uh, something very, very important here. This tool needs to sniff new connections. I'm going to go uh, deeper at the protocol just to show you how it works in the internals very quickly. So for new connections, the goal is very easy. We need to get the connection request PDU, which is in fact a dedicated packet sent by your phone, for instance, when, you, when you're trying to connect to a, a BAD enabled device. And in this packet, there is everything, everything we need to uh, monitor the, uh, or to follow the BAD connection. We got the uh, CRC init value, get also the channel map and so on. So if we capture this packet, we, we are able to follow the connection and, and then sniff, to sniff the packets. But 
for sniffing this packet, we got to be at a very specific moment listening on the specific channel when this packet is sent. And as we saw this uh, previously, there are three advertising channels. So, we, you must just listen on one channel to another, hoping that uh, that the, this packet will uh, arrive at a specific moment. Or you may want to sniff on these three advertising channels at the same time in order to, to get this packet. So, in order for this to work, we need this uh, situation. We need to listen at the, the same time to these three advertising channels. So, this one is uh, quite easy. To sniff new, to sniff uh, new connections, the trickiest part is the uh, active connection sniffing process. So, to, in order to sniff active connections, you don't have all of these parameters. You don't know the uh, connection parameters, so you you have to guess them. And in order to guess these parameters, we made uh, we are going to make some measures. Mark Ryan, the author of Ubuntu's BTL, so the the tool uh, uh, and, uh, I uh, cited just before, uh, created his uh, own te his own technique to get to recover these parameters. And his technique is the following: first, he tries to identify what uh, the protocol calls uh, an access address. An access address is a 32-bit value used to identify a link between two devices. So this uh, access address is uh, used mm, uh, to identify a specific connection. Once the access address is known, we can recover the CRC init value uh, that is used to compute CRC. Uh, this is uh, some kind of seed used to compute the CRC value for every packet. And this can be done very easily. Then we need to get the hop interval. The hop interval is basically the time the uh, b the device we spent on each channel. So how do you, uh, how do we do that? Very easily. We just sit on a specific channel. We are measuring the time between two consecutive packets on this channel, and we divide it by 37 since there are 37 data channels used for the channel hopping uh, pattern. And of course, we can also recover the hop increment, which is uh, the number of channels added to uh, the channel index each time the uh, connection jumps from one channel to another by using some kind of lookup table. So Mike Ryan designed a pre-computed lookup table, and uh, he the Ubuntu BTD, for instance, measures the time between two consecutive packets on channel zero and one. By using this uh, this technique and the lookup table, we are able to recover the hop increment value. So this is Magrayan's technique as it was implemented in the Ubuntu BTD software, and it's still the case, uh, even with the uh, update made uh, yesterday. And of course, Mike made some assumptions uh, back in 2013. He made the assumption that the, uh, all the 37 data channels are used, but it's not the case. Uh, now, in 2018, most of the uh, most of the BAD devices don't use all of these uh, 37 data channels, and they change they, they determine these uh, these data channels by using some uh, kind of channel map. This is a parameter sent in the connection request PDU that specify which channel are going to be used and which will not. So. Um, if not all the data channels are, are used, they, uh, you have to, to keep a 37 channel sequence. And to do, to do that, some of these channels will be remapped, will be reused, if you prefer. So if you have a look at the hopping sequence in this specific case, you will see, for instance, that the channel four is used twice in the seconds. In the sequence, but uh, normally you would you uh, you will find only. Uh, it would be fine only once in the normal sequence if it's not reused. So by uh, modifying the uh, sequence order and making this uh, channel appear twice, if we, uh, if we just measure the time between two consecutive pa packets on the channel four, we will get two values, <laughs> two different values. And this makes max technique useless.
this does not work, this does not work anymore. So, how to deduce all of this based uh, on this uh, new behavior? Well, the first, first thing to do is to deduce the channel map. So, um, how it's very easy to, to, to deduce. We just iterate over all the channels. We are looking for packets, and uh, if we see some, some packets sent by the device, okay, the channel is used. If we don't see any packet, it's not used. So there will be some kind of time that you have to implement to get this, uh, these values. And can take, uh, sometimes, uh, here for instance, uh, four times 37 seconds to complete. Well, this is a, this is a, a limitation of this approach. Once you get the channel map, you can deduce the hop interval by finding a unique channel that is not uh, repeated in the uh, hopping sequence. And then you measure the time between two packets and you divide it by 37 and you get the, in the time spent on each channel. And you then deduce the hop increment based on this. But we don't use a pre-computed lookup table. We are going to generate it based on the channel, based on the channel map. And then we are going to measure and deduce the uh, hop increment. So this is basically the, uh, a more generic version of uh, Mike's technique. But uh, it works pretty well. There are a lot more details in the uh, proof of concept of get the fuck out number 17. Where I write a paper with uh, all the algorithms and uh, the uh, you know the math between uh, behind this uh, this technique. Well, and all of this uh, is going to be implemented in Beetlejack. There is also another another tr trick here for uh, sniffing disconnection. In the specification, there is a, a, a parameter called the instant. You know when a uh, device. Update some uh, some parameters, say the channel map, for instance. Um, it sends a packet telling the, the the device that the channel map will be updated at a specific moment in the connection, but not now, later on. But we don't know this value. We don't know this instant value when we are attacking existing connections. So this might be a problem since it's used for updating the channel map. And if the channel map is updated. We may lose our synchronization. We may uh, lose the signal and lose packets. So the fact is that uh, really we don't really care. <laughs> we don't really care because uh, once um, a channel map update packet is uh, issued by a device, <laughs> whoops, sorry. So, once a uh, channel map packet is, is uh, sent by the device, at a specific instant we don't know, the hopping sequence will change. And then we are going to sniff on channel 11 in this case, while the uh, sequence will go to channel 1. So, obviously, we won't get any packet on channel 11. So, this may be an indicator that the channel map has been updated. And we can deduce the new hopping sequence and resynchronize with the communication. So, with, by using this little trick, we can just follow any connection and support the channel map update process, even if we know, if we don't know the instant value uh, for this uh, precise connection. So, all of this is implemented in Beta Jack. And uh, so I decided to, to, to create this, this new tool. Uh, and I'm very proud to present it at DEF CON this year. So this is a brand new tool based on uh, Microbit. Um, again, this is a, a tiny device, uh, some kind of Arduino sponsored by the British Broadcasting Company. Uh, the original goal of this device was to, uh, you know, help uh, stu UK students to learn how to code. But in fact, we can turn it uh, into some kind of hacker tool, and it's pretty cool. It costs only 15 bucks, so it's uh, quite affordable, and you can buy more, more of them, three of them, four of them, uh, for the uh, exact same price uh, for uh, like uh, the uh, Bluefoot, uh, Adafruit um, Bluefoot LE sniffer, for instance. You can also stack them and uh, create some uh, sniffing rig. If you want to do uh, to do this, uh, so basically uh, I modified the cluster art for uh, Raspberry Pi. This is a uh, just um, a USB 2 uh, USB hub, but um, it's quite uh, quite quite useful. Uh, I had to find a name, obviously. So I, I, since I'm not a very creative person, uh, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
Ma, you see, uh, it's got a bit of jack because uh, uh, because of the new vulnerability I'm going to present in the next section. But anyway, this uh, this tool is uh, is quite. Um, um, you know, quite useful, but I, I, I won't do any live demo uh, because I know you first. Uh, I know if I put some kind of Billy device, you are going to connect to it, and I won't be able to do my demo. And, uh, and of course, uh, th this is a very noisy environment at here at DevCon. I made some sniffing during some talks yesterday, and it was very noisy. So uh, I got videos. <laughs> So the first video shows that the, uh, the sniffing of a new connection. So I specify the B Bluetooth device address in the parameter, and as you can see, uh, we are able to, to intercept this connection and get all the link layer packets. We also get the access address, the CRC init value, and so on. So sniffing new connection, no problem. Sniffing ex an existing connection for a specific device, first you have to identify an ex a valid access address. So there is an option in the tool to scan and identify this address. I pick a target here uh, with uh, the specific uh, access address, and then Beetlejack will recover all the, the required parameters to follow, to be able to follow the connection, and then to sniff packets. So, uh, it recovers the uh, CRC init value, the channel map, obviously, and then it deduces uh, deduce the hop interval and hop increment. And it's synchronized, and if I do some uh, read or write on various characteristics and get all the packets. So, again, existing connection, well, not really a problem with beta jack. And uh, to, to offer some, uh, you know, some other features, there is uh, a pickup export possible. So if you intercept packets with BTJ, you can export these files into a pickup file. Well, obviously this, it was expected for this kind of tool, but uh, it also supports the uh, a specific format for the pickup file that uh, makes it able to use with Quackily. Quackily is a, a tool designed by Mike Ryan to break the encryption keys when uh, some kind of pairing is used uh, with uh, between two, two BLD devices. So this may also be useful if you want to break encryption keys or pairing codes uh, for BLD. So when I was developing this, uh, this tool, this uh, new sniffer, I read the specifications a lot. Uh, I, I went uh, all uh, in, in all of the details of the specifications, and I stumbled upon a very specific, um, you know, not, not a weakness, but something, uh, you know, made me feel bad. Uh, I don't know why, what it was, but uh, um, I found I, I was reading the, the the section about the supervision timeout uh, in um, in these uh, specifications, and uh, just to. to, to just to, to sum it, summarize it uh, a bit, so the supervision timeout is uh, uh, and is provided by um, a device uh, in the connection request PDU. So this is a, a parameter sent in the uh, connection in the connection request PDU, and basically it defines the time after which uh, a connection should consider a, a, a connection. <laughs> A device, sorry, should consider a connection lost. Uh, so basically, uh, if you try to connect your phone with, a, say, your smartwatch, your phone is going to tell the smartwatch that if no valid packet is received, who has been or, or is received after 20 seconds, then your smartwatch and this, your phone should consider the connection lost. And th so this uh, supervision timeout is enforced by both devices. And uh, I had um, quite an idea about it. Yeah, what's that time of time? But what if we um, jam some specific packets at specific times? Let's see. So there is three lines in my slides, the central, peripheral, and attacker. Central is your phone, the central device, uh, the initiator of the connection. The peripheral is uh, obviously your smartwatch or your medical device anyway. So uh, your phone sends uh, regularly packets to the device, and there, are some, there is some, ki some kind of a keep alive packet that, that are sent just to, to be sure that the connection is still alive. So many packets. 
and we decide to jump the packet sent by the uh, peripheral to the central device. And since then, the central device consider the connection not lost, but uh, with no valid data. <laughs> so it starts a timer, and we do this sometimes until the supervision timer uh, is reached. And then the central device consider the connection as lost. But the fun fact here is that the peripheral still gets packet from the master for the, from the central device. So it's not disconnected. And then we can have some fun. <laughs> By impersonating the central device, we can get the connection. So it's based on, on jamming. First of all, I implemented the jamming feature in uh, Beetlejack. So this is uh, just a sh um, short video. I don't know how many times. Uh, yeah, okay. So I, I'm connected on a, to, to a specific device, and I'm, I'm using Beetlejack to to jam the connection. I, I don't know if uh, it's going to it's going to be alright. So in order to jump the connection, you get to recover all the required parameters, to all these uh, CRC you need, channel map, uh, hop interval, hop increment, and so on. And once the beta, once beta jack is synchronized with the connection, it starts jamming by sending bad packets. And this will cause uh, some CRC errors uh, on the um, phone side, and the phone is disconnected. I, I don't know if it's uh, really easy to see, but uh, here it's disconnected. So jamming uh, works pretty well. Uh, so the idea of this attack, uh, which I, uh, I, I call it beta jacking because of the tool, but anyway, uh, it's, uh, this attack abuses BAD supervision timeout to take over a connection. So basically we, we get our hands on an exit, ex sorry, we get our hands on uh, an existing connection so, um, without changing the internal state of the device itself, there is no disconnection at all. So, uh, it avoids some uh, some troubles. Uh, it works on all versions of the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol, versions 4.0, 1, 2, and 5. Uh, but it requires proximity because you need to be close to the target to jam it. Uh, if you are not close, uh, about five meters. Uh, uh, five meters is good. You can jam the target. And I will demo this attack with uh, some example devices. We are going to start with uh, something everybody loves, drones. So I, I found a, a drone uh, on uh, Amazon, and uh, this drone um, uses BAD for the, the communication between the uh, smart applica uh, small application you install on your phone and, uh, and the drone. Uh, so I decided to test it in my test bed. Um, it's too loud, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as you can see, it's uh, difficult to um, to keep it in the you know on video. But anyway, uh, I start beta jack, and I. Uh, I'm going to um, to hijack the connection by using this uh, this tool. So we got to recover the CRC need channel map and so on. Then we are jamming the uh, the, the smartphone to disconnect the the, the smartphone, and um, it gets dis it gets disconnected uh, quite soon. So yep, the smartphone is disconnected. So, uh, the uh, owner of the of the drone cannot. Pilot anymore the drone, but I have the uh, I have the control over the connection, and I can make it land. <laughs> well, uh, I, I know this is not impressive, so I made another video. <laughs> so this in this video I trigger the emergency mode. That causes a cutoff for the motors. So, yeah. But so it's basically the same attack with uh, two payloads. And uh, I also played with uh, <laughs> with uh, some other devices and uh, especially sex toys. I'm not a very great fan of sex toys, but anyway. Um, 
why sex toys? Because Penta's partners made some research last year. Uh, they coined the term screw driving. Uh, they, are, they were performing some kind of wide driving and found uh, this uh, uh, ash from Lovance. And uh, they wrote a complete post on their website to, uh, stating that this is completely cr crappy and, uh, and not secure and so on. Uh, obviously, the uh, vendor of this uh, sex toy saw this article, uh, saw this post, and uh, answered back. They issued a statement saying that if your sex toy is on, but if your smartphone is connected to your, this sex toy, you're okay. Since uh, it's not advertising anymore, nobody can connect to this, uh, to this, um, you know, to this sex toy. <laughs> And uh, I guess uh, you know what will happen in the next slide. <laughs> so the sex toy is connected to my uh, to my smartphone. Uh, just to make the video short, uh, I had to 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 cut it off to cut it a bit. But in fact, I disconnect the uh, smartphone by taking over the connection with beta jack. Takes some time. There is a little pop up on the smartphone. Yeah, this is disconnected. So the smartphone has no, uh, no more control of the, uh, of the sex toy. <laughs> and since it's, uh, UART over BLE, it's quite easy to make it vibrate. <laughs> uh, there is no sound here, just to, you know. But, um, it's, it's still visual. Uh, you'll get my point. I found the character characteristic and I wrote to the, uh, to this characteristic, uh, a special string, vibrate semicolon two. With the, yeah, there are ten levels. <laughs> so, well, uh, I don't know if, uh, some of you wear this kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, maybe, sh yeah, turn it off. <laughs> so, what are the impacts uh, on, of this uh, vulnerability? So, you get an unauthorized access to a device. So, obviously, this was the case for the uh, sex toy, even if it's already connected, of, of course. If there is some kind of authentication performed at the start of the connection, then you can bypass it. So, this uh, may be cool for some smart talk and so on. Uh, and uh, also, since there, is, uh, since there is absolutely no modification of the internal state, since there, are, there is no disconnection of the device, uh, this may leak valuable information. If uh, some characteristics are uh, available in, uh, you know, in, uh, for read and write, uh, you can may get back some data that are, uh, that have been written to this, the, to this characteristic. So, this may be interesting. How to avoid this? Well, the BAD specification provide, uh, sorry, provide some kind of uh, secure connections by using pairing. So if you use, if you are um, using the pairing mechanism and the encryption mechanism provided by the uh, Bluetooth um, Bluetooth specifications, um, should be okay. Um, there is uh, some kind of uh, injection protection. Uh, uh, there is a, a message integrated code added to the all the packets that uh, avoid this kind of uh, manipulation or this kind of uh, you know consequences. But the um, the fact is that the keep alive packets don't have this message in, um, integrated code. So basically, you can take over the connection even if you are using this uh, this uh, this secure BID connection. Well, can do some kind of dinner of service, or I don't know. Uh, or you can do it at the application level by using some kind of HMAC, uh, some kind of uh, authentication uh, for the data you, you're going to exchange. So there are some countermeasures, but uh, yeah, uh, it's up to you to use them correctly. So the tool is available online. It, uh, it has been, it has been uh, released this morning on uh, GitHub. Uh, you can also install it with uh, pip if you if you want. It's also disponible. Uh, disponible. Oh yeah, I'm French. Uh, it's also available on uh, on pip. So this BitOjack tool uh, is able to sniff 
already established connection and new BID connections. Uh, it's also able to jam connections to perform a takeover hijacking uh, like we saw, and uh, is able to export in pickup. And uh, there is also a multi sniffer support. Uh, I mean, if you connect two of them or three bit mi micro bits to your computer, it will use them to parallelize some tasks. So, uh, the channel map recovery um, is uh, sped up if you are using a lot of uh, micro bits with uh, your computer. You know, uh, we got the 37 channels split in four, for instance, if you are using four of them, and uh, it uh, speeds uh, things a lot. So to conclude, bitter jack, well, maybe a all in one solution for BD sniffing. Uh, if you want to, to have a look at this tool or to, to, to try it, you are more than welcome. Uh, also if you want to, to, to post some issues or if you find bugs and so on, uh, I will, uh, under the, under the, them. Uh, so it performs BLD sniffing, jamming, and hijacking. Hijacking works on all versions of BLD. Um, insecure BLD connections, as we may all know, uh, are prone to sniffing and hijacking. So it might get worse with further version of BLD because uh, the Bluetooth SIG is trying to extend the range of the Bluetooth uh, low energy protocol. So um, the Bluetooth 5 version of the protocol uh, is available, yeah, um, is capable of uh, um, about 800 meters connection. So you can, it's, it's, it's quite impressive and in, they might, um, you know, extend this range in the future version of this protocol. So if you are some kind of BAD device vendor, you're more than welcome to secure your BAD connections. Yeah, do it. Thank you very much.